water. Ciao, Laos, benvenuti tutti. How are you today, sweethearts? Happy Sunday. It is Risotto Sunday with Dining with the Diva. We are live, sweethearts. It's three o'clock and we're doing risotto. I'm so excited. I'm over the moon, ready to go. Just hi, Abe. Hi, Chef Abe. How are you, sweetheart? Nice to see you. Today's risotto day. So I'm doing risotto con funghi e salsicce. Hi, Cheryl. How are you, sweethearts? Thanks for joining me today. Today's risotto day. It might be a little longer because I'm going to show you the entire process of what I'm going to do with this one. Hi, Abe, sweetheart. How are you, love? Thanks for joining me, love. Uh, so today's risotto day, and I'm going to talk a bit about the rice that I use. Um, the typical rice is an arborio rice. I'm sure you've heard of that, that they use. Hi, Elizabeth, sweetheart. But I'm going to use what they call the king of rices, the superfino of rices, and this is canaroli rice. This is a fabulous rice. I used uh, arborio for years. I used it when I cooked in the restaurant. I used it when I cooked all the time. I thought it was great. And then I discovered this. It might be a little pricier, but it is so well worth it because you can actually keep it where you don't have to have to serve it within six seconds, which gets very difficult. You know, everyone has to be at the table and sitting down, boom, you have to throw it out, eat now everybody or else it's gonna stick up into a big glommy mess, which is not acceptable after I've spent an hour on the risotto. So the canaroli is the, the, is the, is the king of rice, the superfino. It is a longer, it, it's hard to see here, but it's a longer rice grain. I know you can't see. <laughs> it's a longer rice grain. Hi, Thea. Hi, love. Hi, Roy. Hi, sweethearts. Thanks. It's a better grain. It, it, it's firmer. It holds its firmness. It has a higher gluten content. It is, was actually discovered or, back in 1945 by Emilio, Emiliano. Emiliano Canaroli. He was a professor of agriculture near Milan and this is where the rice is grown in these areas in the Piedmont region and they're just fantastic. Hi Jonathan, hi Leslie, thanks for joining me loves. So this is the rice I'm using today sweethearts, this Canaroli, I actually got it at Wegmans in their international section so you can find it, it's not difficult. They have Arborio which is great too but this Canaroli for me is just the best because it still has a soupy quality and I like a soupy quality to my risotto, I don't like it too firm or too stiff or too sticky. I like a soupy quality. Hi, Kim Stalker, how are you? Thanks for joining us on the risotto day. I'm so excited. I must have made risotto now hundreds of times, hundreds of times. Everybody says, hi, Mama Lamberti's in the house. Dr. Lars is upstairs teaching. So we're all here hunkered down on this rainy day, but we're gonna make a beautiful risotto. I'm using this whole package of cameroli. I'm doing sausage and mushroom, and here's the process I use. First of all, I have stock, as you can see behind me. There it is, loves. It's gonna stay behind me. It's on a low simmer. I had it come to high. I've had sort of at a medium simmer where it's gonna be kept hot. The stock has to be kept hot. I didn't have, and I don't have right now, dried porcini mushrooms, which I love to reconstitute in the stock and use that as the stock for my risotto. But today I don't have it. So what I did, I used a combination of fresh turkey stock and chicken stock and a couple vegetable stock cubes that I had, whatever you guys have. Also water you can use. A lot of Italians actually just use water because they find that it doesn't take away from the taste of the ingredients that you're highlighting. So a lot of chefs use just hot water. I use these great vegetable bouillon cubes from Rapunzel. They're fabulous. They're made with sea salt. I believe they're from, yes, from Switzerland, the great country of Switzerland. So they're great cubes, fantastic. I think you can find them Wegmans. Most places have them, the Rapunzel brand. Hi, John, how are you, sweetheart? Thanks for joining me. So I'm gonna get started, loves, and stop running my mouth, or else we're gonna be a two-hour risotto tutorial. So I'm gonna turn it up, sweethearts, to medium, and I'm gonna saute the sausage and some creamy mushrooms that I have already chopped. A little bit of white onion, or you could use red shallot, is also beautiful in this. A little bit that I already have all chopped. I mise en place way ahead of time. And some beautiful Italian sweet sausage. I'm going to use this today. You can also use the ones that are in the casings. Just take them out of the casings and take it out. But this actually happens to be already out of it. So it's a good two small packages of Italian sausage. You can also use hot sausage would be great as well. So what I'm going to do first is saute everything together get all that really beautiful deglaze it with some red wine i would love to deglaze it with marsala but i don't have any so i'm going to use a red 
and I'll deglaze that, get it all really beautiful and syrupy and cooked down. Then I'm gonna bring my other pot over and start the actual risotto. So I'm gonna put a little olive oil in this pan, sweethearts, and saut start sauteing up. I'm just gonna get that going, loveys. Start you and your mushrooms. Yes, I know, I love mushrooms, fungi. They're healthy, they're unctuous, they're delicious. But it's interesting, I love mushrooms, but I don't like truffles. I actually can't stand the taste of truffle. I know I've maybe only, I don't know if I've ever had the white, I've had the black, and I just find that it's just too overpowering in a dish. I especially don't like truffle oil or truffle butters. I find they're just too intense for me. But I love mushrooms, so there it is. Some people love truffles. Thank you, Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne Turley, how are you, sweetheart? So we're gonna get this started now, lovey. So I'm just gonna put a little bit, I'm actually gonna start with my sausage and get that brown. So we're putting that in, loveys. See, the salsiche. So we're just gonna get that browned and all crunched up in the pan, loveys. You can see it okay today? Okay. So we're gonna get the sausage started, then I'll add a little onion, a little celery, and then the mushrooms, deglaze it. And I'm gonna cook it for a good 10 minutes. This will be a long tutorial, so you'll just have to bear with me and I'll have to keep talking. <laughs> Not difficult for me, right, loves? So, have any of you ever made risotto before? The meat. I've made a lot of different kinds. I just think it's so beautiful. And the cannaroli rice really changed everything for me. I know Dr. Lars and I, I have something, well, I call myself Dining with the Diva, but what we have done um, is we have a website, diningwiththediva.com, and we go into people's homes. We did this in Denmark last year where I actually cook. We put together a meal and we sing a concert for everyone in their actual homes, which would be a good thing now. I think, you know, with social distancing, we could sort of better to be smaller groups of people. Um, yeah, it's going to be delicious. Hi, Tony. Hi, Maestro. How are you? Thanks for watching. Hi, Kimberly. It's risotto day. Risotto con salsiche e fungi. I tried to join your YouTube channel. Had a problem. Okay, Chef Abe. I've heard that if you don't, because YouTube is hooked up with Google, because they're all, everyone's one big conglomerate, I believe you have to have a Google account. I could be wrong, guys. Maybe someone knows this. In order to join, to like it on YouTube. I wouldn't have thought that or to join it. Hi, thank you, Maestro. Hi, darling. Well, cook away. I'm cooking away, Maestro. We're cooking away today. We're browning up our sausage. I've heard that you have to have a Gmail account or a Google account in order to subscribe. Don't know if that's true, but I know Dr. Lars, some of his friends were having problems with it too. So I will check that out for you. I'll research that tonight. Hi, Deborah. How are you, loves? So we're getting our beautiful uh, sausage brown. Takes a while, loves, to brown this off for sure. You don't want it to burn, so it takes a little bit of time. But just keep mushing it as I do with this wooden fork. I use all wood. I love wood. I love wood in the kitchen. Olive wood, any wood. I, I find that it is, to use metal spoons, especially I don't like the taste of it. Uh, so, okay, Roy, you think I'm right about the Google? So that could be it, Chef Abe. If you don't have a Google account, I think they make it difficult, which is not nice, is naughty, very naughty. But we're up to 112 subscribers, thanks to you. Woohoo! we passed 100. I actually got an email from Google saying, I mean, from YouTube saying, congratulations, over 100 subscribers, so that's big. Oh, it's true. She had, okay, so Cheryl had to sign into Google before you could subscribe. So they're being naughty, love. So if you want to really help me, get a Google account, and then you can do it, especially on pans that. Good idea. Yes, Maestro, because you don't want to use a lot of metal utensils on metal pans. They'll scrape them and scratch them, especially on a Le Creuset pan. Best to use wood. I love wood. It's natural. I have a bountiful look, guys. Look at me in my wood. <laughs> I have tons of wooden utensils. I love them. Just love wooden utensils. They're the, they're the best. So we're gonna brown down our beautiful sausage. Hi, Dr. Lars. Hi, sweetheart. Thank you. Yes, we've been teaching all day. We went for a long four or five miler. You got it. Thank you, maestro. So we're browning down our beautiful sausage loves. This is fantastic. Um, so as I was saying about our Dining with the Diva, we go into people's homes. Lovely kitchen. Thank you, Maestro. I'm in my mama's house. It's an 1870s 
Uh, Second Empire Victorian. We moved here when I was about nine or ten. Hi, Dr. Dana, you're watching. And, um, and I've lived here on and off ever since, since 1979. And it's a farmhouse kind of kitchen, so what we did is the, actually the blue, um, cabinets used to be a brown I think yeah, a brown, brown color wood. and what my and they're wood but my sister actually and the whole family I think it was the year I went to Europe and sang when I was there for a few years did them in a beautiful milk paint so it's a milk paint that gets that look hi Molly hi loves yes bamboo utensils are amazing guys I love wood <laughs> is that pre-season sausage good chef Abe yes it's Italian sausage it is a pre-season, just a mild Italian sausage, sweetheart. Yes, it is, sweetheart. So it already is seasoned. So I'm, I'm gonna put a little salt and pepper in, but the thing is, hi, Joanne. Hi, sweetheart. Look at my nails, yes. I'm gonna tell you about my nails. This is not real, it's polished, but it's a new idea. Uh, so my friend Molly, opera singer and teacher, fabuloso, uh, has this fabulous business with nails where I put it on with this sort of system. It's sort of, um, it's almost a like a decal in a way. It's fabulous. So it looks great. Thank you, Maestro Mama Rocks. It's beautiful. Yeah, the house is lovely. <laughs> it's a very nice big house. It's filled with things. Oh. It's filled. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll take you on a oh. tour. Oh, no, you won't. Oh, no, I won't, Mama says. <laughs> oh, no. Do you know the show Grey Gardens? Do you know Grey Gardens? Oh, yeah. Look it up. <laughs> I'm not, we're not at Grey Gardens yet, but give us a, give us a few more quarantines. We'll be there. <laughs> there it is yes these are strips nail strips and what you do is you it's like a you peel it off and you apply it to your nail and you rub it and you file it and they stay on it's fantastic so it took me maybe 15 minutes last night 20 mom well me because you know <laughs> I'm not the, I don't have the most patience um hi Panilla. hi Joanne yes fabulous okay as you see we're getting our beautiful sausage all browned we're getting it down there, lovies. I'm gonna add a little bit of, um, we're gonna deglaze it soon. We'll get all that fond off the bottom of the pan. And yes, Kim Stocker, yes, fabulous. Yes, loves. We're getting there, it's gonna be a great risotto. I know I, I made this a few weeks ago on Sundays when I cooked for a family and I brought some home. And I usually don't like leftover risotto. Mm -hmm. For me, it's too gluey, but this one is the only one that I can actually eat leftover. And add a little stock to it or a little water and bring it back. It's so fabuloso. So it's just fantastic. Yes, you got it, lovies. You got it. Just browning this up. And then after that, I'll deglaze. I'm going to put in a little bit. I think actually I'll save the onion and the celery when I do the risotto. I'll show you that. Um, I'm looking right at you. Thank you, Dr. Dana and Sue. Love you. Yes, Leslie, there's... um talks about the down school. Leslie's a friend of mine from high school. I have a lot of friends that watch me from high school. It's lovely. I went to a very small high school. We only had 70 or so in my class, so we're all still very good friends. <laughs> so she's talking about my mother's downstairs bathroom, which is a, it was a closet. It's underneath a stair. So it's very tiny. It used to be just a closet. But my mom, we turned it into a really neat looking, just a powder room that barely anyone can fit in. But my mom, even though we're, we're not overly religious, my mom decorated the bathroom with icons, and icons and things. I, I have to show you a picture sometimes. It's hard to describe it, loveys. You know, it's tricky. But a lot of my friends love that bathroom. They love it. It is, um, it is a folk art. I call it folk art. That's right, mama, right? Yep. So we're getting all brown, loveys. And then I'm gonna add, maybe I'll just add a little bit of onion to it, just a little bit, and a little bit of celery and get that sauteed. And then the rest of the celery, I do use celery in my risotto today. I like the flavor and I have a boatload of it. So I'm just gonna add a little celery and onion. Then the rest I'm gonna add when I start the risotto, sweethearts, because it's a two process one. It does take time, this risotto. Um, most risottos are just one pot, then you can start to do mushroom, but I like to do the sausage and mushroom ahead of time. Just get all that cooked down. That's fantastic. And then I have some beautiful creamy mushrooms. Uh, use whatever type of mushrooms you have. If you have shiitake, if you have chanterelle, you're lucky enough. If 
you have a really great mix of wild mushrooms um, or just regular domestic mushrooms are great too. Also, I've seen this with portabellas done. It's always fantastic. Hi, Brandon, thanks for joining us. So what I'm gonna do, loveys, I'm gonna add the mushrooms right now as well. Add a whole bunch. I know it's a big, a big amount of stuff, but you'll see we're gonna make a risotto that's gonna be a feed a family of eight. <laughs> that's what it'll do. And I'm add, I may add just a little more oil. Um, I, I will have the recipe for you guys um, on my site, and I'm gonna post it on YouTube and on Facebook. Hi, Jessica, how are you, loves? Today's risotto, risotto con funghi e salsicce. Beautiful, you can use any kind of sausage you'd like. If you like chicken sausage, turkey sausage, really spicy sausage, go for it, loves. Whatever you have will work. So I'm just sauteing all of this down, then I'm gonna glaze it with some red wine. Marsala is fabulous too with mushrooms. I love Marsala wine with mushrooms. I'm gonna turn it up just a little bit higher so then I can really deglaze it really well. Then I'm gonna start the risotto process. I'm gonna change pans and I'm gonna show you what I'll do. Because what I do is I start the risotto. I, I saute onion and celery and then I add the rice. I toast the rice. Then I deglaze that with white wine. Then I start adding stock uh, a ladle full at a time. Now this is gonna be a long video today because I wanna show you guys the exact process of the risotto from start to finish. And it does take time. There's nothing fast about risotto. I mean, you have to be able to be patient and stirring and it's very meditative and I fabulously love it. Some people will just do it in, they'll put all the stock in and do it that way or they'll put it in the oven. And it does come out. It's just that I find it's not, not the real way to do it. And I find this way, it takes time to incorporate the stock into it. You see my stock behind me simmering beautifully. I'm gonna add that a ladle at a time until it's all incorporated in and then you'll see. So I just wanted to get this started because halfway through the rice cooking, I'll add this in. Keep cooking the risotto. At the end, I love to add a large amount of grana padano or parmigiano or pecorino. I have grana padano. As you know, I have the block. <laughs> We're going through the block. But this, I'm telling you, you get this. This will last you. You just keep it wrapped up in plastic. You can slice it if you can if you can get through it, it's very hard to slice these, but you can do it and then keep it in the freezer. It freezes very well. The freezer? The freezer. The freezer. Well, the freezer. Yeah, it freezes very well. Oh, uh, Granite Padano and Parmesan oh. freezes well. It says Barefoot Contessa. Oh. As I said, it's on my Facebook page when I don't sleep at night. I watch videos and research recipes and at 3 a.m. That's what I do. <laughs> Good time. So this is getting really lovely now, loves. I'm coming close now to deglazing this because I want all that beautiful flavor. You see that dark flavor on the bottom of the pan? That's all gonna come back up. And I'm using just, I'm using actually a Shiraz that I had, a California. Uh, I don't have an Italian wine on me, but I thought, okay, any red wine will be good. I'm just gonna put about half a cup in there, loves, three-fourths of a cup. I have it on high and I'm gonna scrape all the fond off and we're gonna deglaze that, loveys. It's gonna be fantastic. So we just let that cook off. You want all the alcohol smell to cook off and it takes a little bit of time, but you wanna cook this down for a good five or 10 minutes. So it takes time, it does take time. So what I could do is I could actually switch. I could take this and put it on the burner behind me, keep cooking it down and start the risotto and then it'll be fine. Hi Terry, how are you sweetheart? Thanks for joining us. What are you guys cooking? I know a lot of you. Um, love to cook. And I know a lot of you are cooking. I see my friend Cheryl making bread. A lot of people making bread. I see some beautiful sourdough breads, pizzas. I see sweet food, cupcakes. I see cakes. I know Leslie's daughter made a beautiful cake. I saw a chocolate banana cake. Looked fabulous. Yes. So here we go, loves. We want to just get all that beautiful taste off the bottom of this pan. And then I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So we just wanna keep reducing that down to have all that beautiful taste. I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. Hi, Amy Jo, how are you? Yes, Amy Jo. Mama says hi. Senora Cox says hello. Oh yeah, hi Jo, Joanne was cookies. Yeah, cookies are fabulous. Having all these sweets in the house and going out for my five mile walks is terrifying. Oh, made chicken pot pie, how fabulous. Oh, wonderful. Leslie made chicken pot pie, fabuloso. Delicious. So we're just deglazing all this. It's all coming off the bottom of the pan, beautiful. Scrape the bottom. 
And then this is going to go into our risotto. Amy Jo says, hi, Mrs. Cox. Hi, sweetheart. hi, sweetheart. Thanks for joining us today, lovies. It's a long risotto tutorial day. That's what we're doing. I need a lot of water. I should probably be drinking this, but I'm being a good girl. But it would be delicious. This is my dad's. This was my dad's favorite wine. He loved this one. <laughs> he loved it. So I'm just cooking this down. Fabulous. Fabulous. It smells fantastic. Also, I just remember what I'm going to put in it. Yes. Um, un poco di... If you have fresh, it's great. But I have some beautiful dried thyme here. And you crush it up between your fingers to release the oils. So I'm going to put a little bit of dried thyme. Thyme is lovely. Where's your mom? Okay, Chef Aid, my mom's over there. She hasn't had her hair cut in a few weeks. Like Albert Schweitzer. She looks like Albert Schweitzer. That's a quote. <laughs> so she's not going to be in the frame. You'll hear her voice in the background, but she refuses to be. I'm going to open, make sure my volume's up. Sorry about that. You know what happens? Phone issues, internet issues. So my mom's just going to be the voice in the background. <laughs> but she is here. Helping me, the hands you see, mama's hands, fabuloso. Oh, so Leslie's making stuffed shells, fantastic. Mm, nice Sounds delicious. Stuffed shells, great idea. Um, here's a story of my ravioli. Remember the ravioli al uovo we made day before yesterday? Everyone loved it, they freaked. Oh, your wife was asking? Yes, sweetheart, my mama's right here. She's here. <laughs> She's in the kitchen, I'm looking at her right now. Um, so, we made the ravioli al uovo. Hi, Matthew. Hi, sweetheart. And I had the leftover filling, and I didn't want to use about 10 egg yolks up, so I just thought I'd make ravioli and just use the beautiful ricotta spinach filling. So we did that, and I made some for our neighbor. And I don't know if anyone knows, uh, we live down here. Our neighbors who live here on the weekends, they're a couple from New York. Her name is Graciela Daniel. She's a very famous Argentinian a director and choreographer, who is the choreographer for Ragtime, for Once on This Island. And Jules, her husband, is a very, Jules Fisher, a very famous lighting designer. Probably won eight, seven or eight, Tonys. Seven or eight Tonys for his lighting designs. Brilliant, brilliant. And we've known them since I was 12. So they're out here, hunkering down, and I took them four of the ravioli. So I just did the ravioli with then a little bit of the brown butter and the grana padano and the bacon. <laughs> It's the picture I put on my Facebook page. That was the plate I took to them. Well, Graciela called my mom this morning and she said to me, I had to fight Jules to the, to the death for the last ravioli. So I guess they liked it. So that makes me feel good. <laughs> I have to say it was quite delicious. So I think we're pretty good here, loves. We're pretty well incorporated with the wine. It's all come off from the bottom of the pan. Um, it looks fantastic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off the heat and I'm going to bring the voice over the fence from Home Improvement. That's right, Joanne. Home Improvement, that's the show. So it's the voice over the fence. You only saw either his forehead or sometimes you never saw the whole face, right? See, once mom gets her hair cut, she said she will be on camera. So we'll have the whole familia here. But now she looks like Albert Einstein or Schweitzer, so she doesn't want to be on camera. And <laughs> you think I'm the diva. <laughs> <laughs> Dream on. Hi, Janelle. How are you, sweetheart? Okay, lovies. We have this all sauteed down. It looks fantastic. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this off the heat. Bring the risotto. Hi, Suzanne. Thanks for joining us. Bring my risotto dish to the forefront. That's what I'm going to do, loves. So I'm just going to move this. Live TV. You know how it is. Okay, lovies. Here's the risotto. I'm using my Le Creuset pan. Here we go. So I'm gonna have it on medium heat. We're gonna use some olive oil and some butter. I'm gonna saute down onion and celery now. So this is now the risotto process. What I'm gonna do, I'm keeping my stock warm over there. And because I can't have two induction burners, I can't have the stock right near me. Some people would say I can take the stock off the heat and it's hot enough just to keep adding. But I'm old school, I like to keep it on the heat a little bit. <laughs> but I don't want to blow all the fuses in the house. The last time I tried to do the two burners at once, it didn't work. So now I just have, so you're going to see me go over here, get the stock, bring it over. That's how it's going to go down. Um, <laughs> no, there's none. 
Do you drain the fat from the sausage? Oh, that's a good, good uh, question, Chef Abe. As always, you're keeping me on my toes, Chef Abe. Um, actually, sweetheart, there's not a ton of fat, I, as I'm seeing from that. There is some liquid that's at the bottom with some of the wine, mm -hmm. so I can drain that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll just scoop it out when I incorporate it into the risotto with this so I don't get all of the liquid, but it's not too fatty. I find the sausage, there's not a ton of fat on it. I'm not sure why, usually sausage can be fatty. Um, okay, sweetheart, thanks for, her, for popping in, Suzanne, sweetheart. So now we're gonna start the risotto, sweethearts. I have some olive oil, use any kind of olive oil you have, you have. Um, and a knob of butter. I have this Irish, fabulous, I'm gonna just put the whole knob in, that's how it's going down. Because you know Chef Abe, it's all about the butter, right, Chef? It's about the butter and the salt. For a lot of cooking, it's about, when people say it doesn't taste like restaurant quality, I know a lot of chefs said it comes down to the butter and the salt. Two very fabulous things, <laughs> is what it comes down to. Um, so I'm just gonna let that sit there, babes, and now I'm gonna put the butter and the oil together, make it nice and warm, add the onion and the celery, start sauteing this down, and now you're gonna see the process of the risotto. So, I have a couple tablespoons of olive oil, a little knob of butter. I like to mix both. So you have the flavor from the butter? Yes, Abe says. <laughs> it's all about the butter, Abe, I know. Chef Abe is a brilliant chef. He actually one chopped, one chopped on the Food Network, didn't you, Abe? Brilliant. I worked with Abe for many years. Fantastic chef. Owns a great, uh, runs the Stoke. Right, sweetheart? You're still there, right? In Easton. That great pizza place, it's fantastic. And I actually haven't been, I know I have to come. Il ti prometto, I promise you, I'll come. So we're getting this all down here, loves. Uh, I'm gonna add my onion, nice white, uh, yellow onion, and some beautiful chopped celery. I love celery in my risotto. Yes. Mama Leslie says she'll cut your hair. All right. <laughs> Social distancing, no hair cutting right now. No hair cutting, sorry. That's what's happening. That's right. So now we're sauteing down the onion and the celery, sweethearts, until it's nice and soft. You don't want it too brown. You just want it soft, translucent. Hi, Jennifer. Thanks for joining me on today's risotto tutorial. It's a longer day, my loves. Yeah, we're gonna pick up a delivery now. So sad, I know, sweetheart. But, Stoke is in Easton in the square. It's a fantastic restaurant. So if you want great pizza loves or wings, just call and pick up and deliver us. It's a fabulous, fabulous they place. Still yeah, they're still open. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that's great. I know it's tough. We're gonna get through this. We will, I promise. Just hang tight, sweethearts. Clara is watching and expects a visit with your cooking. <laughs> Soon enough, probably in un mes, or a couple in a month, maybe. We pray. That's it. So for right now, you can learn all of this, sweethearts. I'm gonna have this beautiful, here we are. We have the beautiful celery and onion. Um, they sure are, love Stoke. Yeah, Jennifer, Stoke's fabulous. So here we go, we're just sauteing this beautiful mixture down. Then I'm gonna add the king of rices, the canaroli rice. And what you wanna do is you wanna toast this rice for at least a couple minutes. Toast it and it gets that beautiful toasted flavor of the rice. It's fabulous. Hi, Stephanie, hi. Hi, sweetheart, how are you? Is that a gin and tonic, boo? I love gin and tonic. It's not, it's water. <laughs> it's not gin and tonic. I do love gin and tonic. I love tonic water. I could drink it all day. I love gin and I love the two mix, but I haven't been drinking a lot now. I just figure it's best not to. Um, I'll let you cook. Okay, sweetheart. No worries, Chef Abe. You're brilliant. Have to see you soon. Yes. Chef Abe's coming. He's going to be a guest once all this is over. Chef Abe is coming on the show, and he's going to cook. It's going to be hilarious. We could even do a competition, which would be terrifying. No, we don't want that. We don't want any of that. <laughs> Hi, sweethearts. Hi, Michael. Hi, lovey. How are you, loves? Thanks for joining me on the risotto tutorial. So we're just sauteing the celery and onion down and soon I am adding the risotto. This is the canaroli. I have switched over. I always used arborio before and now I can't use anything but this because it, the quality is so different. It's soupier, it's a better taste. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Michael. It's just a better taste. There's also one called Via La Nano. It's another brand that's similar. Um, <laughs> 
Abel, go out easy on me. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> Chef A. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good ones. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's a Via Lane Nane, which is another type of rice. You can order them online. Kanaroli is very easy to find, but as I said, Wegmans has this. So, loves, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the rice. And you know what? We're going for it. I'm going to add the entire package. Why not? <laughs> Why not, right? You know, there's like 11 servings because there's 11 of us here. Not. <laughs> We're going for it. It's going to take a little longer to cook. You're just going to have to bear with me. C'est la vie. So, here's the rice. Now, we're toasting the rice. We're toasting it, sweethearts. We want to toast the rice. So, it's going to take a couple minutes. Just get it all nice and toasty. And then I'm going to deglaze with the wine. I'm going to have a little vino bianco, a little Sauvignon Blanc. Use whatever white um, or red, whatever you'd like. I'm just going to use the white today to deglaze it. After I've toasted it, then I'm going to start incorporating the stock. Make sure you have your ladle ready. And the stock hot. It has to be hot because if the stock's cold, it will cool down the rice. And then un disastro. It will be a disaster. <laughs> you have to have the stock at almost the same temperature as you have the rice going. That's, that's the key. Um, so that's what we're gonna do, love. So just let me toast the rice, deglaze it, then I'm gonna start the stock, and you're gonna see the process. And it's a long process, it takes time. Get that rice drunk, that's right, we want the rice drunk. <laughs> and we want the rice beautiful at the end. I know a lot of chefs finish it with butter, yep. with heavy cream. I've seen mascarpone go into it at the end. I've seen uh, one chef who, uh, Thomas Keller, the great Thomas Keller, who owns the French Laundry. He does something where at the end with his risotto, he actually takes heavy whipping cream and whips it into soft peaks and then adds it at the end. And it is quite astounding. I did that once and it lightens it. It just transforms it. It's, it's very heavy. I mean, there's nothing light about this, you know? It's not so fattening. I mean, it is rice and it's stock. And at the end, you just add a little bit of butter and cream or, or not. You don't have to add any of that. If you want to go totally vegetarian, go for it. Yes, that's it. That is it. We got it. Oh, Leslie, somebody wants my Rice Krispie Treats again? I know. It's the brown butter. You have to brown the butter. Brown the butter. That's all. So now we're toasting the rice. I like to put my nose down. You can smell the toasting effect that's taking place. Dana, truffles. First of all, I, I'm not a big truffle. I don't love truffles. I don't like them. Never have. Uh, maybe if I had a $1,000 white truffle, would I change my mind? Doubt it. Um, I don't know. Uh, but I just find they're just too strong, and I find they overpower the dish. I, I, you know, I've spent an hour making risotto, and now it tastes like a truffle. That's all it tastes like. So... That's me. Maybe I don't know. I'm not, I'm not big on caviar and truffles. I, I tend to be a little simpler. So I tend to just love the taste of the mushrooms. The porcini mushroom is a depth of flavor that's enough for me for that, which is, which is great. So I'm now toasting the rice. You want to have the heat on an induction burner around medium. Hi, Annie Lynn. Thanks for joining us. Around medium, you don't want it too high. You want it to slowly the, the risotto and the stock to incorporate together. So we've now toasted it here. Couple minutes, couple minutes, loveys. I'm drinking my water. There we go. We're toasting, we're toasting, and now I'm gonna add just a little bit. Hi, Thea, how are you, sweetheart? Welcome to our risotto tutorial. The risotto has toasted a couple of minutes. And now we're going to just deglaze it with a uh, half a cup of white wine. Um, geez, Betsy. Hi, Betsy. How are you, sweetheart? Thanks for joining us today. So let me pour in a little bit of... That's it, vino bianco. And we're just going to get that all beautiful. And I'm going to turn it up just a little bit to get that wine all incorporated into it. It's going to be fantastic. Yes. Okay, I'm out for now. My attic is calling. Love you too, sweethearts. Everyone's cleaning their attics. Not me. Not my mom. We're not cleaning the attic. Oh, no. You don't want to know what that would be like. I would need to have a lot of gin and tonics for that. So, no, we're not doing that right now. Let's wait till next year. <laughs> no, <laughs> let's not do that. I'm, I'm, I'm busy enough with my lives and with my teaching and, and all that sort of thing, getting everything started and... Uh, practicing because we're praying we're going to go to Denmark in the summer and do our concerts. So I'm working on music for that. And I did promise you we are singing. I said we're going to sing.
sing. I'm going to sing an aria once I get the gown. The gown is on its way. So you're going to have a concert, I promise you. Because it's dining with the diva, remember. So we will have a concert of me singing with my beautiful opera karaoke. Some arias and also some fabulous... Um, I'm going to turn it down to medium again, loveys, because it can start to get too hot. Now the wine is completely incorporated. You can start to smell that it's cooking off. It needs a little bit more time. I like to get that alcohol taste completely out. And then we're going to add the stock. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go behind me and start adding the stock a ladle at a time. And then you're going to see what we're going to have. But as you see, this takes time. This is a, a little bit of a time consuming, but you know, what else do we have to do now? Let's make some risotto. <laughs> you know? And I know in the grocery stores, and I know Wegmans has this for sure. For sure they have it. It's just fantastic. So now that we have that incorporated loves, I'm going into the stock. Here we go. This is it. I have my beautiful stock, a mixture of chicken and veggie, one ladle at a time. That's how it's going down, loveys. So now we're incorporating it in, a ladle at a time. That's how we're doing it. It's actually a little bit high and we have to turn it to low. It's, this is the part that gets tricky. You don't want it too high. You don't want it to boil away. You want it to slowly incorporate it so it becomes really that beautiful creamy texture of the rice cooking together. And you put you know, a ladle at a time, a ladle at a time, a ladle at a time. So it's, it's fantastic. A lot of people, you can put two ladles in, just don't dump the entire thing in because then, I, I know some people do it and I'm sure it turns out okay, but that's just not the way I do it. I'm old school. Hi, Maestro Gregory. How are you, dear? Thanks for watching our beautiful risotto tutorial today. So I'm gonna go in with another ladle of stock. Now, a lot of uh, chefs say that, hi, Franny, hi, Francesca, how are you, Diva? Thanks for watching. Risotto 101. We've added more stock now, another ladle, and we just stir. We stir and get it creamy. Hi, Gary, how are you, sweetheart? Thanks for joining me today. We're stirring and getting that beautiful liquid all absorbed, all absorbed together, and that's what creates the creaminess of the risotto. So it's already creamy before you add any butter or cheese or anything at the end. It's already a beautiful creamy mixture and that's the muse, the, the magic and the genius of risotto. So how many of you have had it out in restaurants? It's not easy to find. I've maybe had it a couple times in, in Italy, of course. In the United States, um, not so easy because it's hard for restaurants to do it. You have to have almost one person just on risotto line. Uh, hi, sissy. My sissy's watching. Thanks for watching, Bowie. Um, you have to have one purse on the risotto. What you can do and what I've done, you can pre-cook the rice with some onion and wine and stock for about 10 or 12 minutes, like I'm doing now, actually. And you cook it. Um, I have to turn it up again. See, it's either too high or too low. <laughs> hi, Joey. Hi, love. Hey, beautiful. This is great. I never learned risotto for my family. Yes, this is, this is it, Booze. So it just takes time. It's great to you know, sit there with your friends and you know, have a glass of wine and sit here and cook it. And if you have an induction burner, you can be out here amongst everyone, which is great. And just cook it down. It's fantastic, but it does take some time, but that's the magic of it. Because in about 15 minutes, it will transform. And it really should only take 15 to 20, the canaroli, because you don't also want it too soft. You still want it al dente, like pasta. You want a little tooth to it, to the bite. Hi, hi Elizabeth, how are you sweetheart? Thanks for watching. You still want that sort of toothsome quality to it. And also to take it off. Hi Elizabeth, she's my cousin. Hi cousin, how are you love? Um, hi Dr. Tammy, thanks for joining us, our risotto tutorial. You still want a bite to it. Also when you take it off the heat and you add the cream and the butter, you manticare, it means you, you sort of beat it up and you take it off the heat and you do that and that's what creates the beautiful creaminess then at the end. With heavy cream, which I don't have, with a little butter, which I have, um, or a little mascarpone cheese, whipping cream, whatever you have, that'll do it. So now we just incorporate, see it slowly incorporates in loves. This is the whole key to the risotto, slowly incorporating in the stock a bit at a time. And that's what takes the time. This is a great, um, dish, you know, beautiful, um, what I call it, stock pot, hello, <laughs> Dutch oven, to cook it in. It's a fantastic one. It's Le Creuset. 
the big nine quart and it does a great job with it because it's enamel, it's cast iron with enamel over it. Is that a huge hunk of cheese behind you? Yes, it is. That is the Grana Padano from the Restaurant Depot. Yes, it is fabulous. I'm gonna use this at the end in the cheese, la, in the uh, risotto, sweethearts. Cheryl says, Facebook needs a smell button. Oh, yes, I know, right, sweetheart? Wouldn't that be fabuloso? Soon enough, I'm sure, right, loves? Here we go, sweethearts. It's coming together, you can see this. You can see this beautiful, I'm gonna put it down a little bit closer, love you, so you can see it. There it is. Is that better? There you go. See that beautiful, that beautiful risotto. It's fabuloso. There we go, loveys. That's it. <laughs> Fantastic. Fabuloso, loves. So now, as you see, it's sort of, when you sort of can do this with the spoon and the liquid is gone, then I add another ladleful of the warm simmering stock. So another ladle. Boom. There it is. And that's what it is, loveys. Now that's a Wagnerian hunk of cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, Gregory, that's a Wagnerian hunk of cheese. That's it. The Wagnerian hunk. This is the Brunhilde cheese. Brun the Hoyotaho ho cheese. This is it. You got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Elizabeth said she's only made risotto once because it's so distracted. Then the boys come. Well, of course, you have three little boys. I don't. So, of course, that's tricky. When you have little ones, you're standing here a long time. And it's hot, so yeah, I wouldn't want really a lot of little ones sort of, you know, stirring unless they were being very safe. Um, hi, Lisa, how are you, sweetheart? No, put it back. Need to see your complete... <laughs> no, you can't see me now? I know, I need one of the big... I need a really good camera. I need the whole setup, the whole YouTube setup. Three million dollars later. But I figure this isn't bad for now, right, sweethearts? It's all good. So we are incorporating this stock. It just takes time, loveys. Just keep stirring it. But at the end, you're gonna have this astounding, remarkable, I'm using my adjectives, they're here in front of me. Scrumptious, toothsome risotto. <laughs> I'm gonna get through the whole list. By the time this is over, I'll need another list. I'll tell you. Thomas Glenn, how are you, dear Tenore? How are you, sweetheart? Thanks for joining me. I'm making my risotto. Con fungi e salsicce. I know it's a long day. Thank you for bearing with me and joining me in this one because the risotto takes time. Allison, hi, sweetheart. I know you're watching from Italia. All of our love to Italy. This is in honor of Italy, your risotto. No, actually, Ali, who's my sister, mom's not feeding me the adjectives. I have a long paper clipped to my tripod. And it's all in front of me, like little notes. That's, yeah, that's what we're doing because mom said I needed other adjectives beside fabulous. <laughs> fabulous wasn't cutting it, so I needed sublime and enticing. Fabulous. <laughs> mom's laughing. It works though, it's good, it's good. My mom's a teacher and now I'm one, so there it is, that's, that's how it goes down. As you see loves, we're getting it in there, it's becoming creamier, it takes its time, but you cannot rush risotto. So you don't say the same ones over. That's sweet part. Hi, Heather, cousin Heather. All the family's on watching today. Dominica, that's why I love this. Everybody's on at once. It's so beautiful. I'm drinking my water. That's right. Not a gin and tonic, Chef Abe. I wish. But, um, okay, love. See, we're going to have another, another ladle is coming up, sweethearts. Another ladle. Another ladle is coming up. Boom. I may even put a little bit more in what the heck? We're going to do a ladle and a three-fourths. Boom. There we go. I'm just going to keep stirring it. Keep stirring it. And then after this ladle, I actually may... Um, just don't get rid of fabulous. That adjective will be an element of your international brand. You're right. You're right, Gregory. You're right. So here we go, loves. So after this one's incorporated, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add back in the mushrooms and sausage... So then I incorporate that flavor into the rice that I've been doing. So we want to get it sorted to the halfway stage and then add the ingredients back in. And you can use anything. I've made a beautiful risotto with carrot. I've done a carrot risotto. I've done a beautiful one with corn, fresh corn and lobster with brown butter <laughs> to die for. 
P and coming up with the spring, I'm, I asparagus. think I'll do a, a asparagus or pea risotto or mix them both or primavera risotto mm. um, is fabulous. You go online and you look up risottos. They do it with everything. There's a fabulous one I've seen with a, a, a more sweet one with apple, apple and walnut. Mm. But also what you can do with risotto rice, especially with arborio, is make rice pudding. Mm. It is one of the best rices to make rice pudding with because it has so much creamy gluten. It's just fantastic. So I was thinking of using my arborio rice that I have in the, in the pantry and making a rice pudding would be delicious with a lot of vanilla and fresh nutmeg and cinnamon. So we're just cooking this down now, lovies, as you see. Cooking this down. This is that canaroli rice. It's gonna be fantastic. Hi, Amy, thanks for watching. Thank you, sweethearts. I appreciate it. I hope you're all doing well out there, lovies. So what are the things you cooking? Or what are your favorite risottos? Give me some ideas for risottos. What do you wanna see? Um, would you do any of those with raw red onion? You mean the risotto with raw onion, boo? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know, I tend to like to caramelize the onion down. There's a lot of beautiful ones with radicchio they'll do. Uh, there's red wine. Rice pudding is the best indulgence, Franny. Yes, it is. Yeah, my littlest likes to cook with me. They have all gone through the phases of enjoying it. My middle one likes to do it. Yeah, a lot of kids love it. It's great to get them started young and get them started cooking. It's fantastic. It's really great. Then they'll have, you know, skills for life. I know I watch, um, what's his name? Uh, Jamie Oliver. And Jamie Oliver's children now are on with him, which is great. The little kid, the little boy is, I don't know, eight or nine. And he can cook a lot of things. It's amazing. <laughs> Jennifer, yes, butternut squash risotto, oh, yes. fantastic, great idea. I'm gonna have to do that one. I don't think I've done a butternut squash yet. So here we go, loves, we're incorporating it in, you see we're getting it very creamy, but this is the time it takes, sweethearts. And this is a lot of risotto, this is gonna feed a lot. Um, <laughs> Allie said she wanted to hear mama protest red onions, my mom doesn't like onions. Unless they're well cooked and caramelized down, loves, that's it. <laughs> So as you see, we're getting a very beautiful consistency here. And when this is all incorporated, then I'm gonna add the sausage and mushroom mixture back in and keeping going. I'm just trying to move the block of cheese, the Wagnerian Brunhilde cheese out of the way because I'm gonna bring my sausage mixture back and incorporate that right into it. And then you're gonna see it's almost gonna triple in size. Hi, Jody, how are you? Thanks for watching, sweethearts. And I will put the recipe on my site, on Facebook, and on YouTube, lovies. I have, uh, since I didn't sleep last night, I spent the night writing the Sorry. recipe up. Thank you, Mama. So we have our sausage and mushroom mixture here to my right. Um, and it's fantastic. I have a spoon. I'm just going to dump it all in soon enough. You're going to see it. See how this is becoming, lovies? This beautiful, gluteny fabulousness. Creamy rice. And so... Scrape it all down from the sides. Keep stirring. That's the key. You have to keep stirring. That's what I say. Um, wow. Yeah, my sister, I don't know if any of you know the Vans Warped Tour. It's a rock tour. Heavy metal rock. Um, and my sister was the vegetarian chef on it. And she made mushroom risotto for 150 vegetarians. I don't know how you did it. I lose my mind making it for 20. I can't imagine 150. <laughs> it just gets, it's crazy trying to make it for that many. Risotto is gluten-free. Yes, it is, Annie Lynn. Thank you. Yeah, it is gluten-free. Fabulousness. So I thought I'm just going to add, start adding my beautiful mixture now, loves. Here we go. And the sausage was not too fatty. I know Chef Abe asked if I drained the sausage, but I didn't really need to. The liquid is not, there's not too much fat in it, I'm finding. Not too much. So I'm just adding a bit at a time. Here we go, love. You see how that's looking? Oh, you didn't sleep either, and it was a bit stodgy. Yeah, that's because maybe our Boreo rice. I find this rice is not stodgy. Okay, love, see, I'm just putting in the sausage and the shroom mixture a little at a time, and then I may just be really brave. And here we go, loves. This is a lot now. This is a lot. It's all going in. Boom. Boom. It's all in. There we go. Fantastic. Grazie, mamma. There we go, loves. It's in. Look at this. Now we've tripled it. It's a lot of sausage. I used quite a bit. Those were two packages. <laughs> but we'll have a lot of beautiful food. Grazie, mamma. So there we go, loves. Sausage, mushroom. Here we go. Now we're just going to incorporate all that in. 
incorporate all that in and then start adding more stock to it so we can get it all together. Look at this. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Make sure it doesn't stick on the bottom. If it does, just get it with the spoon. Yeah. I caught one of the other chefs making fun of it and holding a plate of it. That's not nice. Risotto is a very tricky dish to make in a restaurant. Um, I know Thomas Keller, the famous chef, has a technique for doing it. Like I said before, you cook it halfway, you lay it on a sheet pan, and you cool it down. Then, when you have each order, you cook it to order for almost each, and you put it in a saute pan with more stock, and then put your ingredients, whatever you're cooking, mushrooms, uh, whatever you're doing. Hi, Terry, how are you, sweetheart? Thanks for joining us with our risotto tutorial. So as you see, I've added the sausage and the mushrooms to the beautiful cameroli rice. Yes, smells delish. It does, girlfriend. It is off the chain. So what I'm going to do, loveys, is I'm going to take more stock and incorporate more stock into it now, sweethearts. Ladle at a time. Here we go. And we're just cooking it down. Now, it does take time, sweethearts. This does uh, take some time. It does take time. But soon it will transform, and you will see it. Yeah, it's fabulous. Thank you, Terry. Thanks for coming in and saying hi today, loves. I appreciate it. This is a long process, sweethearts. I mean, it does take some time. It really does, but no worries. I know some, I had a great risotto. I studied with, this is how I learned about Italian cooking. A dumb question, could you make this risotto with a rice cooker at least to start? Oh. Dr. Tammy, that I don't know about if you could do it with a rice cooker. I'm not sure. I would tend to say no on that, but I could be wrong. Maybe I should Google it because I don't know the answer. Uh, I don't know if anybody has ever done it with a rice cooker. I tend to just do it in this and find it's the best way to do it, sweethearts. Yeah, for sure. And um, so just keep stirring it. Get all that beautiful stock incorporated into it now, loves. And I'll taste it soon. Add more, add more. And then at the end, we're going to make... Uh, hi, Marsha. How are you, sweetheart? Thanks for joining us today. We're doing our fabulous risotto. Our beautiful risotto. I'm going to add a little more stock. Oh, yes. Okay. Just for the heck of it. Oh, Mama Googled it. Mama's the researcher librarian on staff. <laughs> so she's, she's found out if we can use a rice cooker for risotto. Grazie, Mama. Cosa, cosa, what does it say? How do we make risotto in a rice cooker? Yes. Actually, if you Google it, uh, when you learn how to make risotto in a rice cooker, you'll never go back. So that's interesting. So Dr. Tammy, it can be done. So just Google it, how to make it in a rice cooker, and they say it's fantastic. Cucina Italiana, yes, that's right, Terry. It's slow and fabulous. Brava. Hi, Patricia. How are you, lovey? Oh, so Jennifer said instant pot recipe for it, but I'm concerned Ooh. it won't be creamy. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, loves, I don't know. I've never, so just try it out. I would use the Carnaroli rice if you can get it at Wegmans or if you can order it online because I find it to be better. But I don't have an Instant Pot or one of those pressure cookers, so I've never tried it, loves. So definitely, um, for sure, try it out. See. Hi, Pete. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Richard Lovey. Hi, sweetheart. Here's our beautiful sausage and mushroom risotto. We're just stirring it up. Mama, could you get me a spoon? Un cucchiaio for my Italian students. Come amore. With love. That's it. Grazie. So we're going to just... I'm going to turn it up a little bit just because there's a lot of ingredient in here now. I'm going to taste it. It's going to be, it's still going to be toothsome. It's still going to be to the bite. And I have to see where I am. What is it? Mmm. Mmm. Fabulous. It's sausagey. It's delicious. Mmm. Fabulous taste. The sausage is great in it. That's it. Thank you. Jody, you're excited for my gown to come? I'm gonna put a picture of it on the page. Wait till you see this, guys. You're gonna lose your mind. And as I said, like that maybe my five mile walks, it'll fit. If it doesn't, I'm just gonna stand here with it all pinned in the back. And I'm gonna sing for you. I'll sing, what, what are you? Is Carmen? Do you want Carmen Habanera? Oh, mio, oh, mio, my mom wants Omeo oh, Babino. Even though I'm not a soprano anymore, but it's not that That's high, I can daddy. still do it. Daddy. And. Yes, I know everybody wants Rice Krispie treats. Everybody wants them. They're not that hard, guys. You can do it. You can do this. It's not so difficult. This is tasting really delicious, loves, but it needs a few more ladles of stock and more time to cook down. It does need a little more time. 
I'm gonna put it down to medium again because I don't want it to boil away. That's the tricky part. So sometimes when you have a, a gas burner, it's a little bit easier. The electric and the induction, you kind of have to play with it. Yes. Oh, it's okay. I will bring Rice Krispie treats soon, loves. That's all good. It's getting beautiful, sweethearts. Look at this. And then what I'm gonna do at the end is I'm gonna have a little knob of butter and some cheese at the end. And I think I have actually a little half and half. That would work as well. Just a little bit to make it creamy for the, just for the heck of it. We have a poco. Grazie, mama. We have a little bit. Marsha, thanks, sweetheart. Fabulous. I'm so glad you all are watching today. This is the risotto tutorial. It takes time, loves. But that's how it is. So I'm going to add a little more stock now, loveys. A little more stock. A little more stock. Just so it doesn't dry out. Not that this could dry out. <laughs> so there we go, loves. It almost looks like a, a jambalaya or a dirty rice in a way. It looks delicious. Thank you, sweethearts. It smells fantastic. Now, if I would have had the porcini mushrooms, it would have made a big difference. It would have even been darker because the stock is so dark brown. It actually colors the rice very dark. Uh, so this one looks a little bit different than the last one. But every time you cook, it's going to be different, loves. It's not going to be always the same. So just... Be brave and just try things. That's the thing. You know, if it doesn't work out, it's okay. For me, it's always trying. I've made risotto a hundred times and or more, probably more. So it's all about just getting the technique of it down and then just doing whatever you want to do it. I mean, adding whatever fillings. You know, chicken is great. Um, shrimp is fantastic. Seafood risotto, risotto frutti di mare with the fruits of the sea. Fabulous, but you have to cook the seafood separately or put it in right at the last minute because shrimp and, and clams or mussels tend to cook very quickly in the steam. So it's right at the last minute and use a beautiful seafood stock. Fantastic as well, really beautiful. Um, but what I was saying was that I studied with Claudio Pinza in Pittsburgh. She was the daughter of Ezio Pinza, the famous basso profondo, fantastic basso, who also sang in South Pacific with Mary Martin and um, that was her father I studied with her at Pittsburgh Opera and her family from Italy they always made risotto and they made a fabulous one the risotto rosso with uh, or vino rosso with red wine and then the the rice is literally turned pink or purple I remember that so I would always watch them cooking this and that's really how I learned it and then through just watching like a lot of videos a lot of different things yeah so he, here I make it in my Korean rice cooker. That's great. Okay, so uh, Dr. Dana's daughter-in-law, uh, so he makes it in her rice cooker. So it does work, loveys. So try it out. If you don't want to stand here, if you have young kids and you're very busy, um, try it out in the rice cookers in the Instapot and let me know how it is because I don't have a rice cooker or an Instapot. So that would be a great way just to sort of let me know how it works out because maybe you know, they're onto something. But I like the fun of just standing and stirring it, the old school Italian method way, which I adore. So as you see, we're getting there. We are getting there. The rice, it, it um, stays a little firmer. <coughs> Sorry, just choked on a piece of rice. <laughs> Live TV. Um, it's firmer than the Arborio. It doesn't get as sticky. So it will taste more al dente. That's it. Fabulous. Thanks for all your information, loves. I appreciate it. We all learn and grow on this show. That's what I want. Because I often learn from doing things with new recipes or from chefs who have different ways of doing things. I you always are learning forever. So it's getting a little bit down here. I don't want it to stick, so I'm going to add a little more stock. Just a little more stock, sweethearts. Yeah. There we go. And then what we do at the end, we tend to turn it off, then add all the fabulous butter and cream and cheese. Hi, Jan! Hi, Jan, how are you, sweetheart? Lars's brother, Jan, in Denmark's watching. Hi, sweetheart. Say hi to your brother. There's Lars. Hey. <laughs> Say hi to your bro. Hey, man. There he I was, is. I was up teaching. <laughs> Dr. Oh. Lars is here with the sausage. He always insane. comes. Everybody comes when the food's done. That's always. insanely delicious. Yeah. So, oh. not finished yet, Amore. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> then Mama and Dr. Lars will have talk, some because they love it. Talk soon, bro. <laughs> 
So have you ever made seafood risotto? Jen, oh, have I made, yeah, have I? Yes, I think I have made seafood risotto. I know I did it once, it was probably a couple years ago, yes. Um, and if it wasn't a complete seafood one, I at least have done a lobster risotto before, which is fantastic. Really great, really fantastic. So, uh, but it's the seafood, like I said, you have to cook it all at the end or in another separate pan and then add it in. But a seafood stock is essential. But what's great to do with stock is if you have shrimp shells or lobster shells, you um, use the shells with the stock, that's what you use. Or you can also, use, I think I've also made it where I've used some clam juice. Clam juice is great as a stock. If you don't have a seafood stock, you can mix it with some water and that's a great way to get the seafood flavor in it. So this is coming together, guys. You see this. Just keep stirring it. Keep stirring it. I have to taste it again. I've got to go in again. I know. It's a hard job. Someone's got to do it. So here we go. Mm-hmm. Fabulous. Still needs more time. It's still a little bit, um, a little bit too crunchy, a little bit too al dente. Making the old-fashioned way gives it the authentic timbre. Sorry, I couldn't resist. That's right, Doc. That's right, Gregory Maestro. Ooh, good word. Good one. My mom likes it. You get, you get an A. You get an A, Gregory. <laughs> and you also probably get Rice Krispie treats at your door when all this is over. I should do deliveries. I don't have a, unfortunately, I don't have a um, commercial kitchen. You're not allowed to cook things in your kitchen and send them. Actually, I just could do it, you know, but you can't do it really as for pay as a company. That's a little tricky. So I'm gonna do this. What I'm gonna do, loves, could, Mom, could you add a little more water to the stock? Of course. I'm gonna add just a little more water to the stock because the stock's been simmering down so it's concentrated a little more. So I find it a little strong, a little too salty. So I just wanna add a little water to the stock and do that. And we'll be finishing it up because then after about 15 minutes, it can sit there and we add everything else in. It sits there, gets beautiful. Because you, you don't want it too overcooked. They actually say in Italy it should take 15 to 20 minutes, but I did a huge portion. So that's why it's taking a little bit longer. There's mom in the background. There's Albert Schweitzer in the background with the hair. Everyone's laughing. There she is. Mama is in the house. There she is behind me. There it is. We're all here, all together. That's it. Except Allie and Joey. Except Allie and Joey and all the rest of them. But they're all online and they're all here in the kitchen. So that is it. Yes. Mama's hair looks fine, Cheryl says. Thanks, there, Cheryl. She said thanks. <laughs> so we're cooking this down, lovies. I'm just going to add a little more stock. Thanks, Mama. That's great. I just need a little bit. Hot, 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 hot. Oh, that's really hot. Yeah, that's the handles that don't have the cool touch, yeah, not metal, fun. Metal handles, yes. Metal handles. Be careful with metal handles. Yep. So a little more stock, lovies. And then I'm going to put in the butter and the cheese, and I'm just going to let it all come together and sit here. There we are, loves. And fabulous. Mm, yes. Yes. You're there in spirit. Hi. Terry says you look gorgeous. Everyone says hi. hi. Everyone's saying hello. Hi, guys. <laughs> Thank you. They're all here. We're all here. Here's the risotto. It's transforming. You can see it, lovies. You can see it. Boom. Coming together. It's soupy. I like it soupy. You know, that sort of wavy, like the Italians say, it has to be have the wave. I like that. Onda. That's it. Alonda. So it's the waves of the uh, ocean. So you don't want it sticky. Then I'm going to put in a little cheese. I've got to hack some off of this massive piece. Got to do a hack off. Good God. Yeah. Got to get in there. So hack off some of it. And then I will put it in. That's what we're going to do. How's the kitty? Oh, kitty is fine. Thank you for asking. Kitty is fine. Needed a shot. Needed a shot, but we're all good. Everything's fine, lovies. Tutti gatti, va bene. That's it. Dr. Tammy says, hi, Dr. Lars. Mm -hmm. Everyone saying hi, says hi, Dr. Tammy. Mm -hmm. Our colleagues are here. It's lovely. So we're going to put a little butter, How a little cream. Two? Oh, sure. Two or three. Uh, two. Two. Maybe two. How about the whole stick, guys, mm -hmm. at this point? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> But then we'll turn it off and we'll just manticare. We're gonna get it all beautiful and beaten in and it's gonna turn very creamy. If I had heavy cream, I would show you how to do the heavy cream uh, whipped up to stiff peaks method. It's fabulous as well. Or a little mascarpone at the end. A lot of people do that as well. It's fantastic. So here it is, lovies. We're getting there. We're getting there. We are getting there. 
Sounds good. It's fantastic. Mm. Just have to see where it is, loves. It takes a little time. This was going to be the long one. Today was going to be lungo. It was going to be a long day because I wanted to do the risotto from start to finish. And I'm not editing. This is live. I'm not barefoot. Contessa has the whole team there to re-edit and show and blah, blah, blah. And now they're at the show's 20 minutes. <laughs> this is going to be probably an hour today. Oh, no. Is it? It's over. Oh, cow. Oh, goodness. Okay. We're over an hour. Una hora. Oh, mi dispiace. <laughs> but where else do we have to go right now, right? So I might as well stay in and watch the risotto. So there it is. You got it. I promise it'll be done soon, Lobby, so you can go on with your Sundays and make your Sunday dinners because I know everyone's getting their Sunday meals together. Are you ordering out? Hi, Holly. How are you, sweetheart? Are you making some fabulous food tonight? I think we'll have this. I also have some leftover turkey soup and turkey salad. We're turkeyed out here. And stuffing, so we have a lot of things left over. Someday I'll make something healthy. Maybe we'll do a smoothie today. <laughs> If it will do a juicing day, wouldn't that be great? So here it is, lovies. I'm going to try it because it's getting close. It's getting close. We're getting close. Mm-hmm. Stuffed shells. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. It's close. It is close, loves. It still has a bite to it, but I think that once I add the butter and the cheese and the cream and I let it sit and incorporate and still continue cooking, we'll be close. Ooh, stuffed shells. Thank you. Yes. Hi, Trisha. How are you, sweetheart? Fabulous. Thanks for joining us, loves. I'm so grateful to all of you. I think we're pretty close, loves. We're pretty close. I'm just going to do one, one more little bit of stock, and that'll be it. We've come to the end of our stock. I like to do a big one of stock like that. I like to have as much stock as possible, because if you run out, you have to heat up water right away, so it gets tricky. So have a lot of stock. Looks wonderful. Thank you, Trisha. It's going to be fabuloso. Sausage and mushroom risotto. Uh, next time, you know, sometime in the summer, we're going to do the fabulous corn. It looks delicious, Christina. By the way, number 115. Woo! So now I have 115 subscribers. We're on the way to 250. Thank you, Roy. Hey, uh, mention that thing with the Gmail account. Yes, we are. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We mentioned the Gmail account. Thanks, dear. Yeah, the Gmail account, I guess you have to be hooked up like Abe Shed to Gmail in order to subscribe to YouTube because they're all interconnected, as we know. I'm not sure you have to. But I'm not sure you have to, but it's easier if you have a Google account than to join, sweethearts. But I thank you, Roy. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. We're close, lovies. We're close. I have to have the nerve to turn it off. No, we're close. Add the butter. Add the, add the, uh, the grana padano, parmigiano reggiano would be fabuloso in this. Would be so great. Would be so fantastic. Um, I may pull it now. I may turn it off. Now here goes the butter, a knob of butter. This is where we manticate. This is where you beat it in. It's off the heat. We're off the heat. I've turned it off. So we're beating in this, beating in the butter. So we have a silky, silky look. You have to get strong with it, guys. Get some muscle behind it. And then... Put your cheese in. This is the Grana Padano. I don't have any Parmigiano. Hi, Nikki. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Roger. Thanks. This is the Grana Padano. I'm grating it in. Or Pecorino or Parmigiano Reggiano, whatever you guys love. Oh, if a chunk gets in there and here and there is fine. No worries. I'm just going to put in the cheese. And I'm going to put a little bit of half and half in it. Just a little cream would be lovely at the end. I just grated my knuckle. We don't want that. Oops. <laughs> I think I need, yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is what happens. Grate the knuckle, you don't want the blood in there. Sorry guys, but this is live TV. I know this happened once to Mario Batali. He actually um, cut his finger. <laughs> but this grater is very sharp and because my piece of cheese was not um, huge, it wasn't you know a big pound of cheese, I have a little scrape and I'm just gonna put it like that. It's what happens in the kitchen, loves, it's what goes down. It's all good, no worries. And I'm gonna put the rest of my half and half. It's not much, it's like a tablespoon of that. But here we go. Here we go, loves. Here we go, we're manticotting. Romano, actually, no Roger sweetheart, it's Grana Padano. It's sort of like a parm. Uh, it's a cow's milk, aged cheese. Thanks, mama. Echo. This is what happens. You ever watch the Great British Baking Show? Thanks, mommy. 
uh, and they all cut themselves on the British Baking Show and they literally have like five band-aids on them because they're doing, oh my God, I've watched it. They've all gone down because it's a nerve wrack. Oh my, you're still graceful. That's good. Ava, hi, sweethearts. Yes, I know, Allie, you've done it a million times. Jesus, he's a chef. You're a chef. That's what happens, loves. You just have to learn from it. But see what happens, loves? It transforms. Look at this. See that beautiful quality? See that? Fabulous. I'm going to put a little more cheese in. A little more. I promise I won't hurt myself. Here we go, loves. If you have a really big knob of cheese, it's easier. If you have a small one, then you're going to go down to the bottom. And these are very sharp, these tools. It's better, I know, the Barefoot Contessa, which she does. She actually grates it in her food processor mm -hmm. a lot better. Yeah, they all have colored tape on their fingers. Yes. <laughs> type A or B. I'm a type O, actually. <laughs> Hi, Jane Loves. Thanks for joining us today, sweethearts. I'm just finishing it up with the cheese. Here we go. We're just finishing up with the cheese. Fabuloso. But you can actually do the cheese in your food processor, which would be easier because you'd have a whole bunch of it and just put it right in. So there we are, loves. Have it, have it. Yeah. Okay. It's all in. Okay. It's all beautiful and creamy and unctuous and fabulous. And why not just do a little bit more because I don't care today because mm -hmm. butter is better. <laughs> Everything's... No worries if you're late. You can always watch the replay. It was a long one yeah. today, sweet peas. I want somebody to taste this. Dr. Lars, mama. Loves. I'm full. Oh, so mom's full, so Dr. Lars gets to I... taste it. We'll be delighted. Okay. Don't be delighted to be the taste tester. I gotta go taste. Teach. I know you have to teach one more. One more little taste pudding. Oh. Here we go. I'm blowing it off. Okay. Now we've uh, we've perfected it. I know it's still al dente. Vieni, amore. Oh. <laughs> he likes it. It's good. Va bene. Fantastic. Okay. Fabulous. So there it is, loves. What is this dish called? It's called risotto con funghi salsicce with mushrooms and sausage. Mm. Here it is, loveys. There it is. Yes, butter and chocolate could bring the world peace. Yes, it yes. could, right? <laughs> <laughs> there it is, loveys. There it is. There's the risotto finished. Okay, see, see, see baby. Good, good Dr. Lars is going back to teaching. Hi, Ananita. Everybody's here. Yep. I'm just finishing it up. A little more knob of butter. And we have some beautiful risotto. Beautiful risotto. I have to go teach myself <laughs> in a bit. <laughs> so we're just gonna finish that up, get it all stirred in, loves, and there it is. I'm gonna try it, because I have to. See how that's gonna be. Mm. <laughs> Fabulous. Mommy, you wanna try it? Sausage is even spicier this week. Fantastic sausage. Mmm, that's nice. Very nice. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Well, Hi, the, Sarah. How are ooh, you? Love the mushrooms. Mm. Mom loves the mushrooms. The sausage is fantastic. Everybody loves it. Hi, Sarah. As we heard, we just finished our beautiful risotto con fungi e salsicce. Fantastic. There it is, lovies. You have a boatload, enough for 10 people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep, there it is, loves. But what's great about the canaroli rice is... The fact that it will, if you, you can put it away in the refrigerator and then wow. the next day you can bring it back and it's not too gluey because it's not the arborio. The canaroli will come back. A little bit of hot water or stock in it to bring it back. Fantastic. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, sweetheart. Appreciate it. Thanks, love. So grazie mille for everyone to, for uh, hanging in with me. Yes, canaroli rice, sweetheart. Canaroli is, uh, is the rice we use typical sort of like arborio but i find it's better it has um it has a firmer bite to it a longer grain it has more uh starch it's fantastic you can look for it on the internet they do have it at wegmans so canaroli that's it the best rice for risotto so thank you so much loves for staying with me today i know it was a long one but i wanted to show you the risotto process and i really appreciate you all thank you so much if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel um, I'm going to try to get the subscribe button in the videos. It's just I'm trying to figure it all out. But if you could go to my channel and subscribe, I'll leave it on my Facebook page. I really appreciate it. So thank you so much for joining me today. It was so much fun to do this with all of you. Plus, I got a, look at me, I got a, a fabulous facial from all the steam. It's fabulous. So I send you all my love. As I say, from Mama, from Dr. Lars, we send you all our love. Tanti bacini, abracci. 
So this is what I say. Stay, 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 stay safe. Stay safe, stay put, stay cooking. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's not going to go on forever. I'm going to have to change it eventually. <laughs> Hopefully. So um, thank you, Jody. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Melody. Thanks, all my loves, Gregory, Dom, Chef Abe, and Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer Bober. We just finished. Thank you, Terry. So love you all, and I'll see you tomorrow because tomorrow's a banana cake. Tomorrow's a banana cake. Actually, I can show you the banana cake, but my mom won't let me give out her secret recipe. Oh, no. Wink, wink. But I can show you it. But you just won't know the recipe because <laughs> you won't let me. And there it is. The only thing I but uh, that's all I think we have the ingredients for is to do a banana cake. So we'll see what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, but I love you all. Have a beautiful day. Stay safe. Stay put. Stay cooking. Love you. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, ciao.